Welcome back on another video on this channel and today we will talk about what do you need to learn to get a job as an Android developer. So the first thing is the programming language and here we have two languages Kotlin and Java and in my opinion Java is outdated because Kotlin already has a big part of the industry and it also has the Jetpack Compose framework that will be in the future a basic standard for all the apps and XML will be gone in my opinion and I know that people says that Jetpack Compose cannot compare with the XML at performance but in terms of performance they are very similar and the syntax of Jetpack Compose is very easy compared to XML so you will have on the screen a comparison of how to create a scrollable list using XML and how to create a scrollable list in Jetpack Compose and as you can see in Jetpack Compose we basically need a couple of lines. In XML we need to use the recycle view and create multiple things to do that so uh, I don't like XML. So which one to pick right? And for the moment I recommend to learn a couple of XML because and I'm not saying because it will be in the future a, a great thing okay? It is because companies aren't already upgraded to Compose and some of them have legacy code like XML and they will migrate to Jetpack Compose so my recommendation is to learn a bit of XML and go straight forward with Jetpack Compose and you will be fine. Another thing you need to learn is the application lifecycle because these are the stages of an application, how it gets created, how it, when it gets destroyed and so on. So let's take them step by step. So on create basically means when the application is created and you can start initializing things such as let's say binding views or creating something that you want to use in your application like screens and so on. The on start event is called when the application is visible to the user but he cannot interact with that and this event is forwarded by the on resume when the user can interact with the application. Another lifecycle event is the on pause and this gets called when the application gets in the background for example and this is forwarded by the on stop and the on stop got called because the application is not visible to the user anymore and the on restart gets called when you re-enter the application from the background and it calls the on resume. Another event is on restart and this gets called when the application comes back from the background and after that it calls the on start. The last lifecycle event we have is the on destroy and this gets called when the application is removed from the recent apps. Another subject that you need to learn are coroutines that are very similar to threads and they are used for background task and so on for the example or so fetching that data from the internet but the difference between the thread and a coroutine is that the coroutine is more lightweight and is easier to use fetching data from the internet is an important thing because almost all the apps are doing that so they can get data from the database from the apis and so on and to do that i highly recommend you to use skator or retrofit because these are very used in the use industry as we talked about fetching data from the internet another great thing to learn is the local databases because these can be used for example to store the data fetched from the internet and use them when the internet is not available or you can use that to cache the information some good local databases are room realm and SQL Lite. So let's say you have a score tracker application and your user can save the score locally but you don't have to use a database for that. You can use a small key value pair that is used by shared preferences to store that in your application because databases are quite large and are occupying more space than the shared preferences. Another subject that you need to learn is architecture because this is how you can structure application and let's see a couple of the most used architecture patterns in Android. So the first one is MVVM and this stands for model view, view model. The second one is MVI and this stands for model view intent. We have the MVP the model view presenter and the MVC which is the model view controller. For example you have to download an image from the database or from the internet 
and you have an URL and you need to use a dependency for that. So you can use Glide, Coil or Picasso to do that and to display your image in your application. So in order to analyze your code, you will need to use a linter and basically a linter is a tool that check your code for vulnerabilities, potential errors and stylistic issues. Some linters are DTA KT, Android Lint and KT Lint. You also need to know how to debug an application and I will show you a couple of dependencies and for what are they used. The first one is Leak Canary and this one detects memory leaks in your Android application. So the second one is Timber and this simplifies the logging for Android. The last one is Chuck and this is a network interceptor for Android and this inspects HTTP and HTTPS responses and requests for Android. Another important subject is testing because this helps you to ensure that your application works in different scenarios and in Android we have two types of testing. The first one is unit testing and the second one is instrumented testing. The unit testing basically takes pieces of code and run them separately and checks if everything is okay and we also have the instrumented testing and this basically use the emulator in order to run tests you can run specific workflows for your application test buttons and so on and you can also have an end-to-end -end test and this means that you test a workflow from the end uh, from the start to the end of the application so let's see some dependencies for unit testing so we have the JUnit which is the basic Android unit testing plugin. Another dependency is mockk and this is used to create mock classes for Kotlin and for assertions in your unit testing you can use Trot by Google or KT Luent. About the instrumented testing you can use RoboElectric and this uses an JVM environment and you do not need to run the emulator for this type of tests. Another popular framework is Espresso and another library built on top of Espresso is Caspresso. The last subject that you need to learn is CICD and this stands for continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment. The continuous integration automates the process of introducing code changes in through a shared repository and continuous deployment refers to continuously testing, deploying the application. Okay, some CI CD tools are Bitrise, Jenkins and Circle CI. I hope that this video helped you in some way and if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this and see you in the next video.